Now, President Bola Tinumbu is set to address world leaders at the ongoing 78th session of a high-level general debate of the United Nations and General Assembly, UNGA, at the UN headquarters in New York. President Tinumbu, in his first outing to the Assembly, will be addressing world leaders by 6 p.m., which is 11 p.m. Nigerian time. Uh, he will speak on the theme of the 78th session of the UNGA, rebuilding trust and reigniting global solidarity, accelerating action on the 2030 agenda and its sustainable development goal towards peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability for all. Now, before we go into the conversation proper, let's listen to the UN General Assembly President, Dennis Francis's opening address. It is an honor to welcome you to the 2023 High-Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development, the SDG Summit. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, adopted unanimously by all United Nations member states in 2015, constitutes a global call to action to banish poverty from our societies, protect and preserve our planet, and to ensure prosperity for all. The 17 Sustainable Development Goals serve as a beacon of hope and a roadmap for common action to create a more equitable, more just, and more sustainable world. Now, at the midway point, it is essential that we take stock of our progress and assess the remaining challenges that confront us. On the show today uh, with me is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Dignity and Investment uh, Finance, Dignity Finance and Investment Limited, Dr. Chijoke Ekechuku. He joins me live from Abuja via Zoom. Doc, thank you so much. It's good to have you on the program. It's good to have you too, Tolu. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I'd like us to start with the theme of uh, the 78th uh, United Nations General Assembly ongoing in New York at the UN headquarters and is rebuilding trust, regional global solidarity, accelerating actions on the 2030 agenda, that's uh, uh, SDG goals and all of this, looking at uh, peace, prosperity and progress. Now, where do we start from? After COVID-19 and what has happened around the world, it's like everyone is coming together to understand that we need to form a common front and speak with one voice. Uh, what do you make or your general overview of the assembly? No country is an island on itself. Uh, every country needs other countries to exist because what you are strong in may not be what other countries also have. So you will see that countries need themselves to be able to have a formidable existence and to have uh, uh, the kind of economic growth that will be beneficial to all of them. So that is why it is very important that countries meet and discuss because if you say you are going to run sustainable development goals uh, alone just because you are a developed economy, you are going to do it alone and you're not going to get all the results. An example of it is the fact that we have, in our country, we have a lot of things, a lot of policy statements made in the country concerning our country. And the state governments are not taking it on and only the federal government will do it. That way you're not going to succeed. So if a particular developed economy or some developed economies come together to say they want to fight climate, um, to make sure the climate is uh, uh, good for existence of human beings in the next uh, 30 years, then we need every other person's buy-in, every other country's buy-in to do, to do this. And it's very, it's very interesting that our president um, is partaking in this. Actually, this is the first time uh, his first United Nations meeting is attending and uh, General Assembly meeting is attending. So a lot of countries are going to be interested in what he's coming to say and how he's going to say it and that is actually going to determine a lot of things that will come. And knowing that Nigeria is uh, one of the largest economies, I, you know, I didn't say the largest economy, one of the largest economies in Africa, and probably, the, of course, the, the largest in population, 
we every country, every other country will be interested in what happens and what is said by our president. So we are expectant, and they are also expectant to hear from our new president. Mm, interesting. Now, I want us to pick one after the other, but I, my mind goes to food insecurity, which is very, very worrisome. Uh, I'm thinking of what we can learn, what sort of partnership we can establish at uh, this gathering that can help us strengthen uh, address these challenges. We saw the Minister of Agriculture also sign an agreement in Cuba with regards to food uh, security. All of this put together, what do you think Nigeria will be able to learn from all of these countries that have done pretty well with regards to agriculture? The first thing to learn is that we have to be uh, self-sufficient sufficient in everything we're doing. Especially in agriculture, um, we saw the kind of war that started between um, mm. Ukraine and Russia, Russia, which actually caused a lot of food scarcity all over the world. And of course, grains, it was then that many countries realized that uh, most of the things they have been eating came from both Russia and uh, Ukraine. And so hunger was just to eat up, and that actually um, increased the inflation rate of all countries of the world because of what happened with food supply. So having said this, uh, it, it was an eye opener for us to be able to start asking ourselves, what are those food areas we need to grow and grow more in order that if anything happens anywhere in the world, we have to be self-sustaining and we have to also have enough for export. You know, if we'll be talking about having enough for export in order for us to have enough revenue, we need to identify those particular agricultural pro products that we have advantage over many other countries and grow them and have um, systemic growth um, from one level to another in order for us to have a target to start exporting these items in order for us to grow our revenue base arising from this. We are blessed with a lot of uh, uh, cash crops in this country and uh, many countries cannot see the kind of country uh, uh, cash crops that we have. And so we have sesame seeds, we have uh, cashew nuts, we have rice, we have palm oil, we have all these. And we can actually grow them to the extent that we have to start exporting to other countries um, in very large quantities and very good revenue base uh, being increased. So that's the uh, that's the op eye opener for us. And we need to take advantage of the latest technology that may be introduced to us by some of these uh, agreements that we're signing and some of these uh, meetings we attended. So we need to identify that the, the time, the, the way we used to do farming in the last 20 years will no longer be the same. And what are those things we need to learn or we introduce to our own productivity in order for us to have enough for our people and for export? So that should be the area we need to concentrate on and to actually go with uh, major critical players in this area, not just government officials, but critical players, major farmers, major farmers in our animal husbandry, farmers in uh, uh, plants and, and things like that. When we go with them, so we see that all the things that are going to be introduced to us by the B2B meetings or government to business meetings we are going to have will actually be beneficial for, to us. To the extent that we learn more and we understand more and bring back more. So these are the benefits. And of course, we also, it gives us opportunity to let other countries know those things we produce and we export and we can export better than others. And... Uh, these are the things, this, this, that's the sense of this kind of uh, meeting uh, for us and other countries. Poverty alleviation and humanitarian needs also tops the agenda here. I'm interested in that. We know what is happening in northern part of the country, in the likes of Plateau at the moment. Uh, so when you talk about humanitarian issues, Nigeria needs to really, really stand upright for whatever will help address these anomalies and the challenges we face. So uh, let, let, me, let me ask you, what should we be looking at eradicating poverty? Or let me use the word reducing poverty because the price of fuel and all of the challenges have definitely increased the number of those that have been pushed into the poverty line. Not my figures, NBS, other international agencies are coming up with these figures. Where should we start to pick this from? If we really get um, our productivity right, you see that we will reduce the budget on humanitarian areas 
and they have moved those monies would have used for to, to do humanitarian work back to and put it back to the system. Um, we know that the country is not producing optimally, and if we're not producing optimally, it also shows that a lot of jobs are lost and a lot of people are idle, not doing anything. So what we have to do is just to go back to the drawing board and identify those things that will make us produce optimally in terms of agricultural production, in terms of industrial production, in terms of every kind of production, actually. Uh, so once we have our factories and our companies produce optimally, a lot of people are going to be engaged in them and people are going to get employed again. But even if we don't want to engage people in all these companies, we need to make it possible for businesses and small and medium entrepreneurs to have access to funds and access to uh, business opportunities that actually will make them grow. And if they're growing, they produce more for the economy and more people are going to become entrepreneurs and become uh, um, employers of labor. So what we need to do is just any effort we have to make to reduce the number of people on the streets and bring them to be hands-on on a lot of things that can do to produce, uh, to grow the economy. You know, right now we know we're not producing optimally and if we're not producing optimally, that means we cannot even export. And so we need everything we can do to reduce humanitarian services in order for us, just because we have increased productivity. Those are the things we have to do. And a lot of them we have to do, a, a, a lot of them. And part of what we have to do is just to reduce all those things that are inhibiting economic growth. What are those things? We need to make sure that the power system is working. You know, for years we talk about power system. We need to make sure that our power works, just like they work in even ordinary African countries. If they work, a lot of people are going to use electricity and at very low cost. We also have to build um, uh, economic hubs or, uh, or production hubs in various parts of the country in order for people to share the services of these uh, utilities that, that I mentioned. If we do that, we need to also ensure that we control um, some kind of uh, corruption that is going on to make sure that people have access to funds and actually utilize them. When we do all this, you see that uh, we, the, the problems we have been encountering will just gradually be reduced and the country will get back to its uh, stage of development again. Oh, let's, before we talk investment, Let's talk about climate change, uh, which has generated mixed reactions among presidents, among <laughs> leaders. Uh, everyone keeps talking about how prepared we are to go green. How ready are we? It's not cheap to go green. We know all of that. So some say some African countries might not be ready to key in 100% into cleaner, greener energy. So when we're talking climate change, everyone maintains different positions in some cases. But what do you think moving on that route uh, at the moment, cleaner energy and Africa's most populous nation? How do you see us tapping into this? It must require um, a gradual movement out of uh, fossil fuel fuel that we're using today. It must require um, a, a strong, strong effort which I haven't seen us make today, maybe because of the economic uh, position of the country, it is that which we must have frantic, make frantic efforts to achieve it. And of course, the targets of what we have, the milestone achievements must be laid out and everybody must get into the milestone achievement. So when we say we need to drop gradually fossil fuel, well, we need to go green. We need to see emphasis made around the, the green energy uh, pro pro production, so that we know this is actually where we are headed to. The only time I can tell you we hear about those uh, green energy is when there is climate 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 uh, change meeting somewhere in the world. Down here in the country, we haven't seen enough effort being made. You know, yes, of course, the the the, the, the current president has mentioned that he's going to be moving. We're going to be moving and be creating more vehicles that will go electric and then also use gas to, to, to operate. These are some of the plans to, to do so. But of course, we need a lot of energy. Um, we need a lot of efforts to actually come out of where we are today. So I think in that uh, sense, a lot of um, some credit facilities have been given out there by develop, developing uh, development uh, institutions 
like the World Bank IMF, for the green energy area. So it's for us to say, this is what we want to achieve, and this is the extent we want to go and set milestones and set targets for them. And so these are some of the things the president is going to be telling the whole world on the efforts made by this country and where we are right now and how long it will take us to achieve 50%, 60%, as the case may be. And institutions are going to be interested in listening to him. And uh, if they see that we need, indeed, a lot of opportunities, if, there, if we have a lot of opportunities here, that's going to bring a lot of investors into the country. And that is just opportunities that we're going to be creating. The more the merrier. The more investors in these areas, the merrier. Right now, we don't have enough. And I'm sure you know that. Yes. All the panels that we, we use today in solar energy, we're using, we're still importing them. And, um, you know, so we need to have factories built here, producing the solar energy thing and other green energy areas so that we know we have actually taken them very seriously. That's the way to go. So let's wrap up with investment issues now. We've seen the president move from place to place can start from Nairobi. From Nairobi, the vice president was in Johannesburg. Johannesburg, the president was in India. We saw all that played out. Everyone wanted to speak to President Bola Tinumbu. He's speaking the language investors want to hear. Bring in your money. We are ready to open up the environment for you. We are going to, the ease of doing business will be a priority with regards to the administration. But I'm going to ask you, what should we be discussing around the table at the moment to make it easy and so attractive for these guys to bring in the box? We need the box of dollars to come in. All right. Um, the first thing first is the fact that the investors need to be assured that their monies are... We'll try to see if we can get back uh, Dr. Ekechuku there. Well, interesting conversation. And it's very important we talk about investments before we wrap up uh, this part of the uh, show. But we'll still try. Dr. Ekechuku, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you Thank hear Thank you me? so much. We, 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 we lost it. Uh, audio for some time. I think oh. network issues. So we lost the network. But we are back now. So tell us uh, what we should do to ease the handshake between us and other countries for them to come in as soon as they can. Okay, so I was saying that um, every investor all over the world will want to be sure that their monies, their investments are safe and that there is uh, peace and stability in the government, peace and stability within the economy. To the extent that if they bring in their money and they want to repatriate their money, it will be done seamlessly and there won't be any restriction at one time or the other concerning how to move their monies in and out of the country. So once they get all those assurances, the next thing we need to um, make them believe is to know that they are safe coming into this country. In other words, we need to make sure that insecurity that is uh, ravaging everywhere today will be reduced. And we have to show the whole world um, that we are indeed fighting insecurity. And when they come in, they are going to be safe. So when we do this, then, of course, the fact that... Uh, the ease of doing business must be such that will be will give everybody a level playing ground, a very friendly playing ground to the extent that whatever thing they need, desire, they will have. And uh, in order to invest in this country, there won't be a lot of uh, policy changes that will affect them. There won't be a corruption that will always make things so difficult for them. And so these are the things we have to do to ensure that the confidence that the investors will have in this country will remain. But the first thing first is the fact that there is some level of stability in government right now, meaning that policy will also be stable. They are looking at all those things and watching and to ensure that these are the things that will bring them in. Yes. I must thank you so much, Dr. Chijoke K. Chuku there, MD, CEO, Technity Finance and Investment Limited, joining us from Abuja to make sense of expectations at the ongoing United Nations General Assembly in New York. Thank you. Thank you very much. Coming up on Business Nigeria, we shift our focus to talk about